top three blood tests that are overlooked when it comes to hair loss. Watch to the end and I will tell you exactly what ranges they should be in as well. Hi, my name is William Gonitz. I am the CEO and founder of Evolution Hair Loss Institute and Advanced Trichology Products. I've been helping people regrow hair for over 21 years and I'm a fellow with the World Trichology Society. So I use blood tests in our practice all the time. And most of the time, when you go to your primary care or whether you go to a dermatologist, you're not getting the blood tests that actually are going to uncover the core reasons for your hair loss. So it's not thyroid, it's not gonna be DHT. These next three blood tests are the ones that I find to be most commonly the factors that are going to play into your hair loss that are overlooked. So number one, that is vitamin D3. Vitamin D3 is actually a hormone. And when hormones interact with each other, they actually cause problems, or in some cases, if there's not enough vitamin D, it's not going to allow your body to process androgens correctly, such as testosterone and dihydrotestosterone, which is the hormone that actually ends up causing male and female pattern loss. So you must make sure that your vitamin D3 is in the optimal range. Additionally, if your vitamin D3 is not in the optimal range, it can directly cause a reduction in overall volume of hair throughout your entire scalp, and in some cases, your entire body. Body. So you must get your vitamin D to the optimal range to ensure you're getting the most hair growth possible. And number two, number two is ferritin. Ferritin is your iron storage protein and this is a pivotal item that I find to be very much overlooked in women, but also overlooked in men. Women are going to lose blood through menstruation on a regular basis and their demands for iron are usually much, much higher than men. And if that's the case, your ferritin may be low and you don't even know it. When your iron storage protein is diminished, your body will not allow the overall volume of iron needed for the hair to grow normally and as full as possible to get to your hair because it's conserving it for your overall vital organs and thus, in turn, reducing the overall volume of hair. You must make sure that your ferritin is in the optimal range or at least above 70 nanograms per milliliter. And the final thing is your blood type. Very rarely does anyone know their blood type in the United States because it's not tested for. But I find that the dietary idiosyncrasies when it eating correctly for your blood type make a huge difference when it comes to inflammation and shedding. So little idiosyncrasies when it comes to blood type play a large role in what you should be eating specifically for positive hair growth. So here are the values that you should be looking for in the optimal range for vitamin D3. You need to make sure that your D3 is at least 60 nanograms per milliliter and also below 100, but also on the screen you have the optimal range. Your ferritin, if you are an A blood type, is acceptable above 60 nanograms per milliliter, but ultimately should be above 100 nanograms per milliliter if you are a O or a B blood type. And finally, here are the four different values for blood type. You need to be eating specifically for your blood type. And in this, you can actually look up, eat correctly for your blood type, and eat off the highly beneficial list. And that is gonna be the best diet for hair growth.